Today I'm going to show you why it's not a good idea to buy a Mercedes Benz unless you're a millionaire. Who can afford to buy a new car when the ashtray gets full and it's just too much bother to clean it out? Or if you're one of those people that buys a new car every two or three years when the new models come out and you just have to have them. And are they expensive to maintain? Check out this bill on this Mercedes that just came from the dealer. $938.02? And that was mainly for an engine oil change and a fuel filter change. They did check the air and the tires and stuff, but basically all they did was change the oil and the fuel filter. And since the dealer wanted another four to five thousand dollars to fix other stuff, the guy brought the car to me, and I'm fixing the things that really need to be fixed for a lot less than that. You have to realize that these are extremely high-tech cars. The Germans have put technology in their cars often just because they can, not that it really needs to be done. Take the spark plugs, for instance, on this V8 engine. There are 16 spark plugs on an 8-cylinder engine. So each cylinder has two spark plugs on it. So you have to change two spark plugs for each cylinder, which of course costs twice as much, and these plugs aren't cheap. And okay, they say that two plugs per cylinder make them run better and work more efficiently, but I'm not buying that because Nissan and Ford tried that on engines years ago, and it pretty much was a failure. Because if you look here, this baby's only getting 11.9 miles per gallon, and I wouldn't call that very good gas mileage. So much for the more efficient engine design. And that's just the tip of technology in this car. Although this car is running fine and there's no check engine lights or anything on, I decided to hook up this high level scanner. And if you look at all the red faults as I go down, you'll find it's found a whole bunch of faults with the car. And just read the definitions of some of them. Rear SAM, rear signal acquisition and activation mode has a fault. Heck, you wouldn't even know what that means until you go into what the code is. Trunk lid ambient light is faulty, or the line to the component has a short circuit or open circuit. Now I ask you, do you really want a car that tells you that there's a problem in the wiring to the light inside the trunk? <laughs> and look at this doozer of a code. It tells you there might be a problem with the washer fluid pump, but if it's working okay, it tells you to erase it and then do a function check of the whole system. Even the computer knows that sometimes it's giving out squirrely advice. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't want a car like this. <laughs> but if you're really into crazy gadgets, look at all these buttons on the steering column. Buttons all over the place. Look at them all. I have to say that three quarters of the customers I have with Mercedes, they don't even know what half the buttons do. I had one over here the other day, and I swear it took me about half an hour to figure out how to open the gas cap to put gas in the car. I mean, seriously, there's something wrong with the engineers that design these cars. I mean, I just don't understand what's behind their thought process. Now over the years, I've had a few customers come to me and they bought a used Mercedes and said, wow, I got a great deal on this used Mercedes. To which I always respond, you think you got a good deal on a used Mercedes. The resale value actually is rather low because people have discovered they cost so much money to maintain that their value plummets radically after they're three or four years old. But I have to admit, I've had customers that enjoyed their Mercedes. There were all people who leased the car and got rid of it when the lease was over. So if you can afford twenty or thirty or forty thousand dollars over a two or three year period leasing a car, they're the car for you. But if you're like me and try to keep your cars forever, ten years, twenty years, even longer, stick to your Toyotas. This one's got the same color as the Mercedes anyways. So if you want to be a cool cat in a Mercedes, and you've got money to burn, go right ahead. They're great machines for fat cats. Today I'm going to show you why it's not such a good idea to buy a used Mercedes sports car, especially when it's thundering outside. Now granted, they're beautiful looking cars. My wife even thinks this is a beautiful car. She'd love to have one until I tell her how they fall apart. This one's got the University of Texas horns on it. No, it is a beautiful car, but it's a 2006 CLS 500, a notorious money pit. Now you might notice that it says CLS 550, but that's a lie. My customer wanted to impress 
her possible boyfriends, so she had me heat up with a hairdryer, the old CLS 500, take it off, and put the CLS 550. It's not a 550, this is a 500. But for all intents and purposes, they look the same. They fall apart the same too. Check this out. I got my scan tool hooked up. I count all the trouble codes that it has. There's 42 of them. <laughs> now in this case, she doesn't care about a bunch of them, but she does care about the air conditioning system. Because as you can tell, this is a Texas car. It's hot and humid here, and her air conditioning just turns itself off every once in a while. It's working fine today. She took it to Dallas, it worked fine, but every once in a while, it just shuts itself off. So let's hope that the computer system can show what's wrong with the computer air conditioning system. It does have a code in the automatic air conditioning system. We'll check it out. It's making all kinds of noises here. It's turning things on and off, trying to figure out what's going on. It gives the code 9211, stored event. Supply voltage of the control module is too high. So somehow the control module is getting too much electricity to it, and obviously it's shutting the whole system off, but it's only doing it once in a blue moon. So let's check out the live data. It's working now, but we'll look for any module stuff we can check out. We'll try the multifunction sensor. Well, that's working okay, except that it's taking the ambient from under the hood, so it's way higher. It's only 85 out now, and it says it's 123, but that's typical. These things get squirrely as they age. Let's try some active tests here. They're insanely complex. Look, you can do actuator motors. We'll just push this here. It tells you the stuff that you have to make sure is working. It's supposed to be 791, and it is 791. All the numbers are matching up, and yes, that's how complex the air conditioning system is in this car. And this is a 15 year old Mercedes. The newer ones are even worse. So you buy one of these things used, you're messing around with all this insane data. And it's not like in a Lexus where they rarely break. These things break down all the time. So we're gonna go to my trusty all data and I'm gonna look up some information about the HVAC control module so we can at least check it out, see if wires are loose, corroded ground wire, who knows? It turned out that this German pile of over-engineered junk has two, two computer modules that run the HVAC system, the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system. Not just one, but two separate computers that are inside the dash. Now this is the total absurdity of these cars. They are that complex to have two separate computer modules to run the air conditioning and the heating system. Now, granted, my wife's Lexus also has a very complex computer run heating and air conditioning system. Like the Mercedes, it's got dual controls for one side and for the other, all temperature you're compensated with sensors, but there's a big difference between this and the Mercedes. I've been working on cars for 52 years. You know how many computer modules I had to replace for air conditioning systems and Lexuses? Zero, none. It's not a single one. But in Mercedes Benzes, I have seen scores in the breakdown. So here's the difference. Mercedes Benz has the image of quality. Oh, it's a Mercedes. Well, Lexus has both an image of quality and actual quality. <laughs> so if you want to bask in the image of quality in a Mercedes, go right ahead. But if you want real quality, get a Lexus. And now getting back to the Mercedes and the AC system shutting off. I had to go inside with my meter and set it on DC voltage, then do a bunch of testing. I tested the grounds, I tested the power, everything is up to snuff. It's got plenty of ground, it's got plenty of power, so in this case, guess what? The main computer module is going bad for the HVAC system. No surprise in these lack of quality Mercedes Benzes as the age. After all, you remember my fancy scan tool? What did it find? 42 trouble coats. And that's just typical on these things as they age. Now this thing is so complicated, I'm not gonna try to rig it like I did her previous car. Years ago, she had a Mercedes SUV. Again, one of the biggest piles of crap luxury SUVs ever made, where they had nothing but problems with them. They had Chinese wiring harnesses, all kinds of nonsense in them. In the case of hers, it would either have heat or air conditioning, but it wouldn't switch back and forth. And her SUV was a lot older than this thing, though it wasn't quite as complicated. And what I did was 
I took the dash apart and I got a coat hanger. Yes, a coat hanger. And I found that the blend door system was all messed up from the computers and I figured out which doors did which. So I put a coat hanger on the blend door latch. So when she wanted heat, she could push up on a coat hanger. And when she wanted air conditioning, she could pull down on a coat hanger just to make the stupid thing work. Now, this particular car is way more complex than that. And I suppose there's a way I could rig it, but really, she's going to get rid of this thing soon, so there's no sense scratching my head trying to bypass this nonsensical, insane design. And since the computer module for this pile of junk is $1,200, then it has to be reprogrammed to fit with the system. Everything has to be reprogrammed on these, you know, it's just absolute absurdity. It is working now, occasionally it goes out. Well, she's gonna be getting rid of this piece of junk soon. Strangely enough, she's talking about getting a Range Rover. <laughs> And I told her, hey, you like going from the frying pan into the fire? She said, well, I always wanted a Range Rover. I said, look, here's an idea for that. Lease one. Don't buy it. Lease it. Then you'll get it out of your system, and it probably won't break because it's brand new. And if it does, you don't have to pay for it because you're leasing the vehicle. And she thought, yeah, I never thought of that, so who knows? Next time she shows up here, maybe she'll be driving one of those crappy Range Rovers. I looked at the top-of-the-line leases around here, and it's about $1,300 a month for leasing those things. Which, if she does do it, six months, she would pay more money leasing that Range Rover for a six-month period than I paid for every single car that I bought for my personal use in the last 50 years that I've been driving cars. <laughs> you don't mind spending that kind of money? Be my guest. But as you can see, buying one of these things used, you're just playing with dynamite where the fuse has already been lit, especially if it's got more than 100,000 miles on it. Having two, not just one computers to operate the air conditioning system, that's bad enough. But there's plenty more things wrong with this car. According to my computer, 41 other things wrong with it, which tells you buying one of these things used, it's a mad man's world if you try to do something like that. In this case, Looks can be deceiving, just like in the rest of life. Beautiful looking cars, endless, and I mean endless, money pits as they age. Because in the case of this Mercedes and many others I've worked on, people buy them to impress people. But if the air conditioning cuts out randomly like this one does, you're not gonna be impressing too many people drenched in sweat because the AC doesn't work anymore. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.